Hello everybody, we're in section 1.3 of the trig book. We're going to be talking about trig functions and trig functions of quadrantal angles. First, let's get really familiar with the Pythagorean Theorem. You need to be so familiar with the Pythagorean Theorem that you can do it mentally without having to do a lot of scratch work. So here it is, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, it's, this is only good for right triangles, so you cannot use the Pythagorean Theorem on any triangle that you do not already know is right. And C always has to be the hypotenuse side. Now, hypotenuse, of course, is across from the right angle, and it is the longest side because it's across from the biggest angle. So there's C. The other two sides, A and B, are what we call legs, and they are interchangeable. It really does not matter which one you label with which letter. Now, here's the Pythagorean Theorem. So if I'm looking for the hypotenuse, what I want to do is add together the squares of the two sides and put the answer under a radical. If you're looking for the hypotenuse, add the squares of A and B and take the square root. But if you are looking for a leg, let's say we want to solve this for b squared. Then you've got to subtract a squared from both sides, and then it would look like this. c squared minus a squared equals b squared. Or if you want to solve it for a squared, you'd get c squared minus b squared equals a squared. And it, to get that, all I did was subtract uh, b squared from both sides. Now, so if you're looking for one of the legs, you want to subtract the squares and put the answer under a radical. If looking for either leg, subtract the squares and take the square root. Alright, now here is our first example. And this one's not in the book, I just made it up for you. Um, the two legs of our right triangle are 4 and 12 and we need to find the hypotenuse. So since I'm looking for the hypotenuse, I know that I need to add the squares together. So I say 12 squared plus 4 squared, that will be 144 plus 16, which is 160. So C squared equals 160. Then C equals the square root of 160. Now we're going to be doing a lot of simplifying of radicals, so you may as well get used to it. Uh, 160 is 16 times 10, and the square root of 16 is 4. So the 4 comes out of the radical, and the 10 stays under. Now the factors of 10 are 2 and 4, so that 10 uh, cannot be broken down any further. And our final exact answer is 4 square root of 10. But for this problem, we know the hypotenuse and one of the legs, and we're looking for the other leg. So for this one, I need to subtract the squares. So I'll say, of course you have to start with the largest one, see? So uh, a squared equals 15 squared minus 6 squared. Now 15 is 225 and 6 squared is 36. So 225 minus 36 is 189. a squared equals 189. Don't forget at the end, take the square root. And so uh, A equals the square root of 189. Now 189 is 9 times 21, and of course 9 is 3 times 3. So I'll have 3 square root 21. Now you might be asking yourself, how did she know that 9 would go into 189? And the way that I knew that is 1 plus 8 is 9, and 9 plus 9 is 18. And since 9 goes into the sum of these digits, 9 will go into this number, so all I had to do was figure out how many times will 9 go into that number. So we got 9 times 21, the square root of 9 is 3, uh, 21 is made out of 3 times 7, so that will not simplify, and the 21 stays under the radical. Now we're about to define the six trigonometric functions and before we do that, we need to figure out how we can know r. If you notice here, they've plotted a point, x comma y. They drew a ray from the origin to that point. And now the horizontal side of this triangle is x. 
and the vertical side of this triangle is y, whatever that y coordinate is. And so you recognize this as a right triangle, and I'm sure you will recognize this as the Pythagorean theorem that's already been solved for the hypotenuse. So right now that we know how to find r when we're given x and y, let's define the six trig functions. Okay, there is sine. Now sine is S-I-N-E, but we always abbreviate it S-I-N, and we always put the angle there, because sine doesn't mean anything if you don't have an angle to do the sine of. It's like square root or reciprocal. The word reciprocal does not mean anything unless you tell me what to do the reciprocal of. And the word sign does not mean anything unless you tell me what to do the sign of. So there's sign. The next one is cosine. So cosine is abbreviated COS. So we have sine theta, cosine theta. The next one is tangent. And tangent is abbreviated TAN. And then the next one is cosecant. And cosecant is abbreviated CSC. And then secant. Secant is abbreviated SEC. And cotangent is abbreviated COT. Now I know you may be wondering why did I do sine and cosine this order, but then I did cosecant and secant that the other order. This one the co came second. And this one the co came first. And I'm there's a reason why I did that, but I need you to be familiar with the six trig functions in this order. So you'll want to learn these abbreviations because we're going to use them every day of the semester from now on. All right, now here are the six definitions. Sine of theta is the y coordinate over r. Cosine of theta is the x coordinate over r. And tangent of theta is the y over the x. Now those three basic ones you need to learn, you need to memorize them very carefully and very thoroughly. Now after you have those three memorized, then we can say cosecant is r over y. Do you recognize it? It's the reciprocal of sine. Secant is r over x, which is the reciprocal of cosine. And cotangent is x over y, which is the reciprocal of tangent. So these reciprocal relationships you need to know. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals. Cosine and secant are reciprocals. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. So now you know why I introduced them in the order that I did. It's very important that you associate sine and cosecant, cosine and secant, tangent and cotangent as reciprocal relationships. Okay, so once again... Memorize these three, and then if you know the reciprocals, then you have the other three memorized as well. Now, for example one, the terminal side of angle theta in standard position passes through the point 8, 15. Find the six trig values of angle theta. Now you know that the six trig definitions require us to use x, y, and r. I already have X and Y, and now I need to draw my triangle so I can find R. Of course, 8, 15 is in the first quadrant, so you see my coordinate system here. And here's the point 8, 15. Now, 8 is the horizontal side of my triangle, and 15 is the vertical side of our triangle. And theta is the angle here, and there's the hypotenuse of our triangle. So if the definitions require us to know x, y, and r, then the first thing we need to do is uh, find r. So since it's a hypotenuse, we will be adding these two squares. r squared is 8 squared plus 15 squared. That's 64 plus 225, which is 289. r squared is 289. That means r itself is the square root of 289. Now, I just happen to recognize it um, as the square of 17, but your calculator will help you out with that. So, r equals 17, and there it is. Okay, now the six trig definitions, if I know them already, it's easy to find the six trig functions. Sine of theta 
is y over r. That will be 15 over 17. Cosine of theta is x over r. That will be 8 over 17. Tangent of theta is y over x. That will be 15 over 8. Now the next three are reciprocals of the first three. So what's the reciprocal of sine? Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, which is 17 over 15. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that's 17 over 18. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so that's 8 over 15. For example 2, we have the terminal side of angle theta in standard position passes through the point negative 3 comma negative 4. Find the values of the six trig functions of angle theta. Okay, so the we, we draw our point negative 3, negative 4 right here. And so our theta is this angle here. But it doesn't matter that theta is in a different quadrant. Our six trig definitions are still the same. So I have my x and my y here. And of course r. Now it does matter that x and y are negative. So let's keep the negative with those sides. Even though normally a length is a length. But... But, but this time the, the direction of the length does matter, so we will keep the negatives there. And we need to find r. So we'll be squaring negative uh, 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. Now, of course, you know, if you square a negative, um, it's still positive. So this is going to be 9 plus 16. 9 plus 16 is r squared, so 25 equals r squared, so r is 5. Now, before we get started on this, let me just point out to you that r is always positive. So I don't want you to ever wonder if r should be positive or negative. r is a, a length of a hypotenuse. It has no direction. It is always considered positive. Now, sine is y over r. So our y coordinate is negative, and then r is 5. So it's going to be negative 4 over 5. And for cosine, we have the definition is x over r. And so that will be negative 3 over 5. For tangent, the definition is y over x. So that will be negative 3 over negative 4. But of course, negative divided by negative is positive. So that's positive 4 thirds. Now the next three are reciprocals. So cosecant is r over y which is negative 5 over 4. Now, I want you to notice that I left the negative in the top because it really doesn't make any difference, but it's just more customary to not have the, the negative in the denominator. That's considered kind of awkward. So let's always keep the negative in the top because it doesn't affect the value of the number. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that will be negative 5 over 3. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so that will be positive 3 over 4. Now I've picked out a few problems from the end of this section, so we're going to look at, uh, on page 26, number 25, 28, 29, 35, and the instructions say, suppose that the point x, comma y is in the indicated quadrant. Decide whether the given ratio is positive or negative. Remember that r is always positive. So drawing a sketch may help as always. Always draw a sketch. So here goes our sketch. In quadrant 1, um, x would be positive and y would also be positive. In quadrant 2, x would be negative but y would still be positive. In quadrant 3, x and y are both negative. In quadrant 4, x is positive but y is negative. Now number 25 says for quadrant 2, would x over r be positive or negative? Well, in quadrant 2, which is here, x is negative, but r is always positive. So let's um, think x would be negative, r would be positive. Negative divided by positive is negative overall. Okay, number 28, for quadrant 4, would y over r be positive or negative? In quadrant 4, y is negative, r is always positive. So again, that would be negative over positive, which is negative. 
For number 29, we need to find in quadrant 2, would y over r be positive or negative? Well, in quadrant 2, y is positive, so that would be positive over positive, which is positive. And in quadrant 3, would y over x be positive or negative? Well, in quadrant 3, x is negative and y is negative, so we would have negative over negative, which is positive. So there you go on those four. Now example four from the textbook. Find the values of the six trig functions for an angle of 90 degrees. All right, let's draw our 90 degree angle. And notice that the point 0, 1 is on this terminal side. Now you actually can use any point on the terminal side, but if they didn't give us one, we had to come up with our own. And the easiest one is 0, 1. So now r is the distance from the origin to this point, and that distance is a straight up 1. So r is 1. And uh, let's go ahead and do sine of 90. Now remember, that's y over r, so that's 1 over 1, which is 1. Then cosine of 90 would be x over r, so 0 over 1 is 0. 0 on top means 0. Tangent of 90 would be y over x, so 1 over 0. Now, zero on bottom means undefined. And then the next three are reciprocals. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. That's one. The reciprocal of one is one. Um, the reciprocal of cosine is secant. So the secant of 90 degrees is the reciprocal of zero. Now, if you take this fraction and turn it upside down, you'll get one over zero, which we know is undefined. And for cotangent, uh, that's the reciprocal of tangent. If you take this fraction and turn it upside down, you'll get zero. So I don't know if you realized this or not, but the reciprocal of zero is undefined, and the reciprocal of undefined is zero. So um, they, you know, a lot of people think the reciprocal of zero is zero, but it is not. The reciprocal of zero is undefined. The reciprocal of undefined is zero. Part B of example 4 says find the values of the six trig functions for an angle theta in standard position with a terminal side through negative 3 comma 0. So this time they did not tell us the size of the angle, but they did tell us the point, which is just as good. So r again is the distance from the origin to this point out here. This distance is 1, 2, 3. So R is 3. Remember, R is always positive. Okay, so the sine is Y over R, which is going to be 0 over 3. 0 over 3 is 0. The cosine is going to be X over R, so negative 3 over positive 3 is negative 1. The tangent is going to be Y over X, so 0 over negative 3 is 0. And then the next three are reciprocals. So cosecant, reciprocal of sine, the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. Secant, reciprocal of cosine, the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. Cotangent, reciprocal of tangent, the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. All right, now, um, you can kind of memorize if you want to. This is only if it's helpful to you. If the terminal side of your quadrantal angle is on the y-axis, then tangent and secant will be undefined. If the terminal side is on the x-axis, then cotangent and cosecant are undefined. So, Again, you know, you can always just figure these out, and this is just kind of a shortcut way for you to remember these. But um, if the terminal side is, uh, is vertical, then tangent and secant are undefined. 
if the terminal side is horizontal, cotangent, and cosecant are undefined. And just if that sticks with you, then it might save you a minute here and there. Now we're going to talk about something called the unit circle. So um, the unit circle is just a circle around the origin whose radius is 1. Now if the radius is 1 on the unit circle, then some neat things happen to our trig definitions. For example, sine of theta we always thought of as y over r, but if r is 1, then that becomes y over 1, and y over 1 is just y. So all of a sudden, sine of theta is just y, as long as we know that r is 1. And cosine, instead of being x over r, we can just think of it as x over 1, so it's just x. Cosine of theta is x. So this makes things easy now. For a quadrantal angle, if I can come up with one of these four points for my quadrantal angle, then sine will be the vertical part, and cosine will be the horizontal part, and tangent will be vertical over horizontal, and we no longer have to think about r because r is 1. Let's try it out. Evaluate each of the following trig functions. Alright, knowing that r is 1 and dealing with these four points, now, you know, if I, if I told you to draw a circle around the, rate, around the origin that radius was 1, could you name these four points automatically? That's what you need to be able to do. And if you can do that, then you can say, okay, cosine of 90, cosine is the horizontal coordinate, at 90 degrees, the horizontal coordinate is 0. Okay, um, sine of 90. At uh, 90 degrees, the vertical coordinate is 1. Tangent of 180. At 180, tangent is y over x, which is 0 over negative 1. Tangent is 0. Cotangent of 90. Alright, uh, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so it's going to be x over r, so it's going to be 0 over 1. Secant of 180. Now, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and 180 is out here, so the reciprocal of the horizontal coordinate is negative 1. And cosecant of 270, if we go to 270, Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so I'm looking at the vertical coordinate. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. Here is a table that shows you for each quadrantal angle. Now, and keep in mind that one of them is repeated because 0 and 360 are coterminal, aren't they? Both of these have terminal side along the positive x-axis. They've written out for you all six trig functions for each of these angles. And notice that when the uh, terminal side is vertical, like for 90 and 270, the terminal side is vertical, tangent and secant are undefined. When the terminal side is horizontal, like it is for 0 and 180, cotangent and cosecant are undefined. See? So, now I don't really want you to memorize this at all, but I want you to be able to draw the four coordinates, the ones and zeros from the last slide. I want you to be able to draw the unit circle, label the four uh, coordinates, and be able to say, okay, sine is the vertical coordinate, cosine is the horizontal, tangent is vertical over horizontal, and then you got each of your um, reciprocal functions. You can do these on the calculator. You need to make sure the calculator is set in degree mode. Unless you've messed with it, it should be in degree mode. But, um, you know, things change. So, you know, some of you poke around on your calculators and change things without knowing. So, if it's in degree mode, you will see a little DEG symbol down here in the corner. And you need to make sure that that's there before you start trying to do trig functions of these uh, angles that are in degrees. One of the most common errors is people trying to do trig functions on degree angles when their calculator is set in radian mode. All right now, for test one, which we are quickly approaching, you will not you will have a part where you can use the calculator, 
but you will also have a part on where you will not be able to use the calculator. You will not be able to use the calculator on test one. Part of it you will, but part of it you won't. So you need to be able to come up with the sine, cosine, and tangent, all six trig functions for the quadrantal angles from memory. Okay, from memory. Very important.